So if you pre-ordered College Football 25, then we are officially just under a week away from the game's release. It has been a horrendous long 11 years waiting for this game to come out, but we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So in today's video, I wanted to take a look at five Power 5 teams that you may want to consider for your upcoming dynasties. But before we get into the video, guys, my name is Mike. I appreciate y'all stopping by and watching this. If you do end up enjoying it, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It is absolutely free to do so. We're going to be doing a ton of College Football 25 content going forward this year. So if you want to stick around for that journey, like I said, hit that subscribe button. We will be here all year long. So let's get into it, guys. Five Power 5 teams that you might want to consider rebuilding for your upcoming dynasty. First up on the list, we're heading to the Northeast where we are going to Rutgers, visiting the Scarlet Knights. Now, this one was a... Bit of a toss up here. I wanted a team in the Northeast. There's no powerhouse program in the Northeast part of this country. And when you're looking at Power Five conferences, you really only got two legitimate teams to choose from here. It was either Rutgers or Syracuse. Syracuse would have been a solid choice, but I looked at it like this the tiebreaker for me, Syracuse at least has a basketball program that's worth the damn. Rutgers, on the other hand, doesn't really have all that much. So Rutgers is going to be the choice here for us. Now, Rutgers football history, it's not much to really look at here. They've got two double-digit win seasons in, I believe, the history of their program. They have one in 2006, and then going all the way back to 1976 was the one prior to that. So, like I said, a lot of mediocrity for Rutgers football. Now, they had a solid run back in the early 2000s with Greg Schiano. Guys like Ray Rice were on the team. But ever since then, it's completely fallen off. Now, Schiano is back up there coaching at Rutgers. He's been there the last few years now. See a little bit of uptick. They had a seven-win season last year, pinstripe bowl victory. So by far the best season Rutgers has had in a long time. But if you want to get them over the top, then take them over. Honestly, for a team that's been in the situation they've been in for the majority of their history, the facilities look nice up there. Like I said, that's one of the big things for me. Stadium's got to be nice. Uniform's got to be nice. Their stadium is pretty solid. I don't hate it. I mean, looking through the pictures here, it's got a pretty good size to it. Now, obviously, that first picture's not going to do them no justice with the uh, sparse crowd they got there, but we should be able to fill that stadium up, get the players in there and get it done. Now the uniforms, they're not terrific by any means, but they're not bad either. It looks nice. It's crisp. It's clean. We'll take it. There's nothing outstanding about it. But for me personally, I don't hate to look at it. And that's one of the criteria. Like if I hate to look at the uniforms, then it's just not going to last. Rutgers does not look bad at all. Now, as far as the roster goes, there's not a ton of talent here. You've got returning quarterback, Gavin Wims out there. He is the incumbent starter, but they did have, I believe it's, I can't remember how you pronounce the first name. It's Ethan, something like that. Kalik Manis that came over from Minnesota. He has transferred in. He was the starter at Minnesota last year. So he's going to look to compete for that starting spot in Rutgers now. But the only real bright spot on the offense is the running back, Kyle Manungai. 242 carries, 1,262 yards last year and eight touchdowns. He looks really, really solid. That is going to be the focal point of your offense not a ton to write home with at receiver. Their leading receiver last year only had 36 catches, 400, 500 yards. So you're going to need to bring some talent in there, probably bring in your own quarterback in the next year or two. I don't think either one of the guys you got there are going to be solid, but you do have a running game to lean on in year number one. Now for our second team here, we're going to keep it in the Big Ten, but we're going to flip over to the Western Division here, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now this is a program that I can't lie, I have not really thought a whole lot about. I, when I was doing my research, their name popped in my head, but I didn't really know a whole lot about them. And then I started looking stuff up. And I got to be honest, this one might be fun. You're talking about stadium wise, a good looking stadium. Minnesota has a beautiful stadium. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm tripping, but I absolutely love their stadium. But this is another one of these programs. It's, it's They've kind of been irrelevant in the Big Ten. They had one really, really solid year in 2019 where they went 11 and two outback bowl win there. P.J. Fleck is still the head coach. But with the new teams coming in like Oregon and USC, you got to think it's just going to knock Minnesota down another peg or two in their own conference. So this could be another fun one to rebuild here. They got new uniforms going into the season as well. I think they look really clean. I'm not usually a big fan of that maroon, red, yellow color scheme. Not really crazy about that. But honestly, it looks really good in Minnesota. I'm down with it here. I think they look really sharp. Now, as far as the roster in Minnesota goes, like I said, it's not a whole lot here. Now, we talked about Calic Manis. Uh, Transferring over to Rutgers there. So they lost their starting quarterback. They're bringing in Max Brosmer. He's from New Hampshire at the FCS level, but he was a top three finalist for the FCS Walter Payton Award, which is essentially their Heisman Trophy in FCS. So you're getting what could be a very, very underrated quarterback here. 
He threw for over 3,400 yards last year with 29 touchdowns and only five interceptions. So pretty good stats from him. We'll see how that pans out for him moving up into a big conference like this. You're also getting a nice transfer receiver coming in here now. A four-star kid that was at Georgia last year, Tyler Williams. He is transferred up here to Minnesota. Good look to try to crack that starting lineup for them as well. So give them a little depth at receiver. So you don't know. It could be a nice little combination right there between Brosmer and Williams. At least give you a little something to look forward to going with that offense going forward, at least for the first year until you get your own guys in. But again, just not a ton here in Minnesota to like outside of the stadium and uniforms, which, I mean, that's kind of what you want. So for our third team here, we're going to go down to the SEC and we're going to look at Mississippi State. Now, this was a bit of a toss up for me. I didn't want to go with the homer pick. I am an Arkansas Razorback fan, and that would have been a very easy choice to put in this list. But I wanted to get away from my team and I took a look at Mississippi State here. So it kind of came down between them and South Carolina. Mississippi State feels like it'd be a little bit more of a difficult rebuild. Mississippi State's one of these teams. They've just kind of been mired in mediocrity for a very long time now. Anywhere between four to seven, eight, nine wins, somewhere in there. Said it's pretty consistent in that middle ground of the SEC. But now with Oklahoma and Texas coming in as well, that's just going to knock them a little bit further down. So you're going to have your work cut out for you, obviously, being in the SEC in general. But with two more big dogs coming in, it's not going to make this any easier trying to rebuild a school like Mississippi State. I will say the one thing Mississippi State does have going for them, though, is Davis Wade Stadium. The fans there are always absolutely insane, no matter how good or bad that program is. They show up, and that's really all you can ask for there. So it's a pretty nice-looking stadium, too. So you can't really argue with it there. Great fans, solid stadium. Uniforms, on the other hand, leave a little bit to be desired. I don't hate them. They're not my least favorite in the SEC, but absolutely not my favorite either. But they're not bad to look at. I like the helmets. Not crazy about the jerseys. Personal opinion only. But the uniforms are definitely good enough that I would consider using them in the dynasty for sure. I don't hate looking at them. Now, the roster at Mississippi State is going to leave a little bit to be desired. Gone is longtime starter Will Rogers. He has transferred out. And in comes Baylor transfer quarterback Blake Shapin. Now, he looked good in the spring game for Mississippi State. He's got 27 starts back at Baylor. So he's got a ton of experience. You got to think he's going to be the starter going into this season. They've got some other guys that could vie for that position. But I believe with the way he looked in the spring game, Shapin is going to be that guy going forward. Now, other than him, there's not really a ton of experience on the offense. You lost Tulu Griffin at receiver, Xavier Thomas, Justin Robinson. Wasn't a whole lot in the running back room to begin with last year. So you're relying on a lot of transfers, some freshmen coming in and wide receiver like J.J. Harrell, Mario Craver, Braylon Burnside. So see if any of these young kids can step up there. So it's a bit of a youth movement over in Stark Vegas here. You're going to have to find your quarterback going forward. I don't know if he's on the roster for you right now or not, but get him in there. You got some young wide receivers that you can kind of build around in the future. So number two on my list of teams, we're going to go down to the Big 12 here and take a look at Texas Tech, the Red Raiders out in Lubbock, Texas. Now the Big 12 for me with Oklahoma and Texas gone, we're looking for a new program to step up and be the face of this conference. I hope it's going to be Texas Tech. I love the uniforms. They're always a really fun program to pay attention to. Now, they got to compete with the likes of Utah coming in now. Obviously, Oklahoma State's still there. Kansas State's kind of rolling. Arizona looks good. West Virginia can always be dangerous. There's a lot of really solid programs in the Big 12. But Texas Tech, for me, I think this is the team you might want to take a look at here if you're going to rebuild a team in the Big 12. Now, like all these other teams, you look at their history here, it's kind of mediocre. They had a really solid run in the early 2000s, back when they had guys like Michael Crabtree there. You had Graham Harrell at quarterback. ton of good players have come through there. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes played there. Not a ton of success in college, but you see what he is in the NFL. So you can get the players at Texas Tech. Can you become the coach that's going to develop that talent and send it to the next level? Now, when you're talking about new jerseys coming to the season, Texas Tech has got a whole new set of uniforms and let me tell you, they are gorgeous. I absolutely love them. The white helmet to me on the white jersey, white pants is absolutely phenomenal. The all blacks look great. It's just Texas Tech has got it going on. The color scheme has always been fire there. I've always liked what they've done. But these, this might be my favorite set of Texas Tech uniforms they've ever had. And as far as stadium goes, it looks great. It's Texas Tech. I mean, it's a school in Texas. Most of them have really solid stadiums. Texas Tech, no exception to that rule. That stadium is perfectly fine. Those jerseys are phenomenal. You got a lot to look at here. I think it looks good. You're going to like it. Now, take a look at the roster here. Baron Morton is going to be your starting quarterback, barring him staying healthy, which from what I understand has not been something he's been terrific at. 
So if he can't, you're going to have to find another option there. But you do have a very, very good running back in Taj Brooks. He had an outstanding season last year, rushing for over 1,500 yards. So you'll be able to lean heavy on the run game there. But you do have a good weapon coming into Texas Tech. Micah Hudson, five-star prospect out of Lake Belton, Texas, is going to be the receiver there. Obviously, being a freshman, could be some growing pains, but you're expecting big things out of him. He should be your number one receiver, if not this first season, definitely going into year number two. So whoever you got a quarterback, you got a solid option of wide receiver to chuck the ball to. All right, so for our final team on this top five list, we're going to head out to California by way of the ACC now and take a look at the Stanford Cardinal. Now, this this is going to take some adjusting for me because seeing them and Cal in the ACC just feels wrong on so many levels. But alas, here we are. Now, this is one of these teams. Uniforms look solid. Stadium solid. Everything's good out there in Stanford, California. But you're going to have to decide at some point in the future whether you want to keep them in the ACC or whether you can do a little conference reshuffling with them. That would be a route I would consider because I would hate to have to travel to Miami for a road game and then go wherever for the next. I mean, it's just it's too much going on. The ACC is way too much travel for them and Cal. I don't like it. So that could be a route you could take. You could look to move them into a different conference or just shuffle around conferences altogether. But Stanford uniforms, like I said, not terrific. They are nice and clean, subtle, easy to look at. No problems there. Again, their stadium, it's a beautiful stadium. They have trouble filling it up because they have been horrendous the last several seasons. I mean, long gone are the days of Jim Harbaugh and David Shaw when he took over. They had a really, really nice run when you look at guys like Andrew Luck was there, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Michael Wilson. They've had a ton of good players throughout the years there, but they've officially fallen back to hard times. It has been it's been rough out in Stanford for the fans of the Cardinal. So this is going to be a task. This is going to be a task to rebuild here. I really there's a lot going against you out of Stanford. There's things you can look at like how are you going to try to recruit players? You can put stipulations on yourself because you know they only accept you know, certain GPA criteria. I don't know how you'd break that down in the game, but that could be a fun way to try to put stipulations on who you can and can't recruit at Stanford. Now, the Stanford roster, on the other hand, this is going to be pretty much an overhaul on both sides of the ball here. You got returning starter Ashton Daniels there. Had a solid season last year, but he's not terrific. You got Justin Lampson behind him. You're going to have to figure out who you want to be your guy going forward. Running back room, not a lot to love there. You do have the name power with EJ Smith, but again, he hasn't been terrific in college either. The one bright spot on this offense is wide receiver Alec Ironmanner. He had the breakout game against Colorado last year, an absolute stud, 62 catches, over 1,000 yards, six touchdowns on the year. So you do have something there to throw the ball to. Who that starting quarterback is going to be that's going to throw him the ball, that's going to be up to you. That could be a tough task. And then the defense, you, you just got a lot of work there. One of the worst defenses in college football last year, you're going to have a ton to rebuild there. So you're going to give up a lot of points, but I would just bomb the hell out of the ball down the field to Iron Manor and pray that you can stay close in some of these games. But yeah, for me, those are the five teams that I would consider if you want to look at a Power 5 team rebuild. Now, we do have a couple honorable mentions here. We mentioned my school, Arkansas, obviously down in the dumps in the SEC. They're going to be worse off. Syracuse is another one I consider as well. I'm sure there's a few more that are slipping my mind right now. But those are the big five. Those are the five that I'm looking at. It's like, if I'm going to do a Power 5 school, I'm taking one of those. I'm leaning heavy Minnesota. I'm not going to lie. But all five are solid choices. But if you have any more suggestions for Power 5 schools that you think you might look into rebuilding, leave them in the comments. Let me know. I'm kind of interested to see what everybody's looking at this year. Let me know what you're going to do. Are you going to go the team builder route? Are you going to look at one of the smaller schools? Are you going to look at a power five? Are you just going to take your favorite school and run with them? I know I'm probably going to have like five or six dynasty files. So I'm going to be all over the board with it. But let me know in the comments what y'all are planning to do. We're going to get out of here on that note, guys. I appreciate y'all sticking around and watching this video. Like I said, if you did enjoy it, hit the subscribe button. We will be back with more college football content. So I will catch y'all on the next one, guys. Take it easy. Peace.